Welcome back. It's still the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. The World Bank has urged Nigeria to urgently strengthen its fiscal management, uh, create a unified, stable market based exchange rate, and it's reiterated the need for the country to phase out what it described as, uh, quote, its costly regressive fuel subsidy. Now, it also advised the country to quickly rationalize preferential trade restrictions and tax exemptions. The bank's group president, David Amorpas, gave the admonition while commenting on a new Nigeria Public Finance Review report released yesterday in Abuja. Amorpas said, quote, Nigeria's government urgently needs to strengthen fiscal management, uh, create unified, stable market-based exchange rate, phase out its costly, regressive uh, fuel subsidy, and rationalize uh, preferential trade restrictions and tax exemptions. They said, quote, this will lay the groundwork for the increase in public revenues or increases in public revenues and spending needed to improve uh, development outcomes. He also said decisive moves will significantly improve the business enabling environment in Nigeria, attract foreign direct investment and reduce inflation. And uh, he's saying the World Bank is ready to increase support to Nigeria as it designs and implements these uh, critical reforms. Uh, Ogbona Okuku is uh, an investment and economic development expert. He's our guest tonight, uh, this morning, rather. Um, good morning to you, Mr. Okuku. Thank you very much for your time. Yes, good morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Now, listening to the head of the World Bank, what comes to mind, and the way I see it is uh, an adult telling an adult who's refused to grow up what to do. You need to wear your, your eye on your shirt. You need to um, yeah, you need to wash your clothes. You need to sweep your room. Um, you need to, uh, you know, pay your tax. You need to brush your teeth. You need to have your bath. All these things that you expected to do at a particular age and do them well, it seems like <laughs> an adult telling a fellow adult what to do. Nigeria has refused to grow up. What, what, what do you say to this, these admonitions by the World Bank? I mean, this, this, it's been long coming. I mean, the, the World Bank have always, the IMF, the World Bank, uh, other international uh, developmental partners have always said to Nigeria, there are certain things you cannot continue to do. And then experts, experts within the nation have also tried to admonish the fiscal, uh, fiscal management team of the government to say there are things we cannot continue to do. We have to look at the more creative ways to begin to manage our resources. And it brings me to what, I, what, what we call in economic development, we call it um, you know, a, a public value proposition. Now, um, it's a concept where, where people who are supposed to manage public offices understand their responsibilities and then weigh side by side with the outcome of their policies and their management skills to see if they'll be able to give public value to those, you know, with those um, government resources, be it government offices or be it, uh, uh, be it uh, uh, funds, if they're, if they're able to use, utilize those funds or their responsibilities to actually give a better life for the people. So the reality still is still staying in staring at us, you know, in our faces, see, are we going to have the public, you know, are we going to have the, the, the political will to take the right decisions to bring our people out of poverty, or are we going to continue to, you know, behave the same way and expect a different result, which everybody knows that it is the first form of being insane. So the, the, these things are just things that keep, you know, staring at, our, it's staring at us, and then decisions have to be taken, and then the people are not willing to take the decisions, so you're being, you're willing to ask yourself, are there things that they are looking at or they are seeing that we are not seeing? So the reality keeps staring at us, and then these changes have to happen. So if they decide to, fine. If they don't, then the people have to actually begin to cry out, say, please take us to where we ought to be, because this economy has to be managed properly. All right. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm sounding like a, a, you know, a broken record. I'm sure people will be bored when I keep talking about the financial management of the country and even the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning. Uh, yeah. When the head of the World Bank, um, the group president, David Malpas, says, quote, Nigeria's government needs to, or urgently, rather urgently, needs to strengthen, strengthen fiscal management, 
uh, what does that what does that mean? What do you what do you think he's he's, he's driving at? What he's you know simply trying to say is Nigerian government urgently needs to first of all think of, think of a more creative way to you know uh, uh, manage the, the the subsidy regime which is actually not helping us grow our economy. Now, the government needs to become a bit more sensitive when it comes to decisions on how expenditures are done at the, gov at the level of government. So we need to streamline, become more efficient in how we spend money. Now, it is, it, it, this might sound a little trivial. You see, in a country where we're talking about no money, we don't have enough revenue, we don't have enough income as a nation, you are still seeing agencies of government buying cars worth over 100 million naira. You're asking yourself, is it that these people are not in touch with reality? So when you're talking about physical discipline, it is the ability of people taking charge and making sure there are things that should not appear on the budget. Even from those who are, because the fiscal managers, are, the, the legislators are also fiscal managers. They need to also scrutinize some of this budget and say, come, there are things we can't be buying. We can't be buying luxury cars at this time. Whether we like it or not, there are things we should just step down on. Like I said, this that's a bit trivial because I mean, it's, you can if you look at it in percentage to uh, you know what the budget says. But I mean, it is if it, as you as, if you accumulate them, it begins to show. It begins to actually amount to a whole lot. So the reality is still facing us. That is where I am coming to. Now the second thing is. I, what have we done to see how we can show up, you know, our our revenue our revenue bucket? Look at the entire ecosystem. Have we increased our revenue? If oil price goes down today, what else can can we can we do? Now it is so painful that we are still talking about tax to GDP at less than ten percent as a nation. No country succeeds. No country succeeds. I keep saying it. No country succeeds by you know planning their budget around rents from natural resources. No, you plan your budget based on income, taxes, you know, transactions, so invest rightly. What are the things we need to do to see how we can, you know, increase our tax net as a nation? What are the things we need to do? Then the third thing, you know, we have to also consider here is, you know, after you've looked at, you know, the, the, the fiscal discipline as per expenditure, the income. So are there things, are there lifelines that we're taking that we are not taking advantage of? I always say this, until you begin to take advantage of lifelines, because anything that is a problem is an income genera generation a, 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 a pipe, pipe for any nation. If security is a problem, how, why are we not making money from security? If people are lawless, why are we not making income from lawlessness of people? So, I mean, you see, it needs, we need to be a bit more creative. We need to sit down and ask ourselves or come up with a development plan that everybody must adhere to to see how in, you know, to increase our income streams as a nation. We are not, we are not doing well when it comes to income generation because that's why we keep borrowing and then we are not able to service those loans because our income has not increased as a nation. You know, th this issue of uh, fiscal management with the World Bank Group uh, Managing uh, uh, Director or the Group uh, President, uh, uh, Malpas has said is is is, is to me is very important because um, I, I keep asking, you know, what the role of the Minister of Finance is. Um, why I'm, I'm saying this is because we're seeing if you conduct a fiscal health check on the country, you see that the country is very sick fiscally. You know, let's not talk about the monetary side. Uh, we'll look at that soon. But on fiscal side, you can see that you will see the country. You can tell the country is sick. Um, you look at the, the, the budget uh, and how much it's going to take to service the budget in terms of loans. Uh, I remember the day, the day, the exact day Nigeria crossed the line into having a deficit budget. Now it's become almost like a normal thing. Um, in times past, you would have seen a certain Ngozi Konjo Wala or maybe a Kemi Adelsho or some other person saying, okay, we have a problem. We need to do X, Y, Z. We can't continue like this. We have to take this method. We have to do this. Method. But in this current uh, uh, dispensation, what we're seeing is it's just about announcing how much is being borrowed, how much is being spent, how much is will be taxed to Nigerians, how much is being spent. And it's almost like the only you know, strategy of the government is to borrow more, spend more, uh, tax more, spend more. Um, what can you say about this? 
Now, um, let me let me start by saying that um, it will be um, I won't be doing justice to this conversation if I I look at, at um, uh, uh, you know um, compare Okonjo Iwala as minister of finance in Nigeria with this present minister. Now, because one, Okonjo Iwala, understanding the concept of economic development, you know, under, had an understanding of the structure of the nation. So when she took the job, she made sure that they added a caveat to her portfolio, which is the, 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 the manager of the economy. So she was not just the Minister of Finance, but also the economic manager of the nation. Now, what that simply implies is understanding the structure of this nation, that you need a whole lot of things. So there are a lot of things that in, in the wheel of development that have to work together for you to be able to grow an economy. So this particular minister is just the Minister of Finance and National Planning. So she brings out a plan, which if the Minister of Agriculture refuses to listen to her, nothing happens and nothing will happen because the minister of agriculture just as an example has access to the as the president as much as she does so at this point in time the next person to actually the next question to ask so who is the coordinator coordinator of the economy so which brings me to the office of the vice president because this particular minister is not the coordinator of the economy so that is the disparity here Okonje Iwala was the manager of the economy during uh, good blocks time or during a vast just time when she was in government. But this one is not. She's just there to manage. She, so she's like a le ledger keeper. We are getting, we are expending. So that's what she's, so she's not bringing up concepts. So at this point in time, it, it takes me to the economic, um, the, the economic management team being headed by the vice office of the vice president. So the reality is the question should go to the vice president's office. So what are we doing? So those concepts should be coming from the office of the vice president so that we will know someone who will be able to tell the minister of education what to do. Because if we have a plan, a national plan to grow our economy based on intellectual property, so there has to be a growth mechanism that will come from intelligence, you know, from, from people, from education, there has to be a plan. So if we're trying to industrialize, we're not looking at the raw material supply strategy, which will come from agriculture or any other sector or the petroleum industry. So it's, you see, so there's a, a huge disparity here. So it would be good for us to have this conversation properly and then ask the right people the right question. But, but so we need to talking about the vice, the manager of the economy. We're talking about the vice president who has been, I mean, not talking about this vice president in particular, but the office of the vice president, which has been described as a, a spare tire as far as um, governance in Nigeria is concerned. I mean, do we expect anything to be able to be done? Um, uh, but I still, I insist that the Minister of Finance has a role to play because even as, uh, as, as a, a ledger keeper, if you want to call that, she's an accountant by training and by qualification. Um, mm -hmm. You still have a role. For instance, uh, the, uh, Farouk, the Minister of um, of humanitarian affairs, uh, it's one other ministry I can't, I, I can't, I don't understand because we have a national emergency management agency. But that's another issue for another day. The Minister of Finance says uh, uh, humanitarian affairs goes to the National Assembly, uh, sits before the committee, the Senate Committee on Special Duties, and can't explain a certain 206 billion naira uh, in her ministry's yeah. budget. Yeah. And he's saying that she has to go ask uh, Zainab Ahmed, the Minister of Finance, so she can explain what that means, so she'll come back to the National Assembly. I mean, it's a mess, really. I mean, who went to, uh, is it the World Bank or IMF recently, to ask for more loans al along with uh, Mayfield? It was the Minister of Finance and the Vice President. Um, so what are we saying? So that's what I'm saying. I think there's, there's, there's this, um, things that are not adding up. I understand where you're coming from. But I said, if you isolate her, that's my point. If we isolate her in the conversation, it, it will not be, we won't be doing justice to our office. So we need to all bring everybody together. The, 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 the office of the vice president, who is supposed to be constitutionally supposed to be the, the, the coordinator of the economy, because she, he oversees the economic management team of every administration. So it also comes to, you know, comes to, you know, comes to the fore when, you know, so it all depends on the management style that each administration, you know, desires to, you know, to, to, to use to run the economy. So, I mean, the, 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 the economic advisor to the president will tell you, you know, there are certain decisions that they have to take, that they know they have to take. They have an advising government. I mean, Salami has an advising government. Let's see how we can get out of this subsidy issue. And then 
the Minister of Finance will still be working on how if we, we can't pay subsidy. So, the, you know, so there's there are a lot of things that are, are not adding up. You know? right. So I'm also with you, but I mean, it also brings us to the fact that, you know, it, like the, the World Bank says, you see, these are the things that deter investors. They don't want to come to business where there are uncertainties. So there has to be, you know, that coherent management system, which was what Okunjo Iwala's economic management style brought. And if you remember, you know, just to buttress further on what I, my point, when she came during Obasanjo's time, she was not the coordinating minister okay. of the economy. Okay. But when she came during good luck, so she knew she needed to be the coordinator, so they had to add All that right. to All right. her. Uh, very quickly. Her yeah, the, the, very quickly. The, the Marbos is also saying, the World Bank is saying Nigeria needs a unified um, uh, uh, um, and stable market-based exchange rate. Um, uh, I mean, is this feasible? I mean, I, some people like me wonder, you know, who controls the black market, who, de who determines um, w how the man in Sokoto and the man in Port Harcourt will be selling black market at the same rate on the same day. You know, it doesn't seem to be as black a market as, as it sounds. But they want Nigeria to have one exchange rate, which is what happens in the normal world. Is this possible? It is highly impossible, but it's workable. When I say it's impossible and it's workable, is we need to because I mean the is the is the aftermath. Is, 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 is to allow the market forces to determine the exchange rate. Yes, that is what it's supposed to be. Now, you see, the inflation that will hit us is not going to be able. We can't manage it. If we did this long before now, yes, of course, it might actually have you know you know paid off or been a lot better, but if we try it at this point in time, I can tell you sincerely that dollar might hit as much as a thousand naira. This is very simple. They are very simple things. We don't print dollar. We only earn dollar. So what are the things that we are doing? So our export corridor, what have we done to see how we can, you know, exchange resources, exchange intellectual intellectual property to, you know, to gain a lot of uh, inflow effects. So we're not doing so much. So it is it, it, it comes back to all depending on oil rent to for everything. So it, it becomes a bit difficult. So I, I don't know how we're going to be able to achieve that. And then it brings to it brings to it brings to the you know to the front burner that the next government they have a lot of work to do. So everybody needs to be a bit smart on you know taking their decision who on who should manage your economy at this point in time. All right, the bell more for fuel subsidy in a discussion, the debate refuses to go away. He's asking for, he calls a retrogressive uh, policy called a fuel subsidy. Indeed, in that um, uh, Nigeria Public Finance Review report released by the World Bank, they said that only 3% of poor people in Nigeria benefit only 3% from uh, the fuel subsidy, while wealthy, uh, the wealthy in Nigeria benefit more from petrol subsidies. Um, and they want that face out. Very quickly, your thoughts on that. Now, it is very simple. Until you have a very creative way of distributing incentives, it will be uh, the, 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 bigger, the bigger fish will always, you know, just like you bring in, you know, bring in uh, dogs together and then you bring lions in a place and then you throw, you throw meat there. The, the bigger lions would actually, you know, overpower others and then so it's like an you know, animal kingdom. So, pretty, you see, that's what, um, you know, I was talking about public value proposition, the ability for any person in government to know that I need to manage, streamline uh, ideas to be able to creatively distribute wealth. So, it's called redistribution of wealth. Now, if a man who owns 10 cars fuels his car, and then a man who has no car, you know, is still, money is taken from him to give the man who has 10 cars, excuse me, you have not solved any problem. So we have to have a, a you know, structured, well, creative, well, you know, yes, we can take our subsidy, but the subsidy can be targeted. You can actually, not distribute of money, no, no. There are things you can do. You can isolate public transport, have the, you know, have using, using AI, you know, to you, you, using, you know, things like Google Maps to actually, you know, give those subsidies or fuel subsidies to transport companies 
And that also helps you in taxation. It, gives, it helps you build de a database where you know those who fly between uh, 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 Adamawa to Issei. You know how much, you know the distance, so you know where they can get the fuel from. So these things are, can be worked out, but it's just that the laziness of people who, you know, public, uh, public office managers don't want to be critical in their thinking to All see, right. or even the experts who know what to do to actually help them design a, an incentive policy All that right. will actually get to the poor. The issues are many. Uh, I don't know. It's just like everything is just, uh, you know, conf in a confusing way, modeled up as far as the, the economy, the fiscal aspect of things in the country are concerned. We don't know what to expect, but let's see how things go. I mean, yesterday I bought a loaf of bread for 1,000 naira. Um, I think <laughs> you, you understand where I'm coming. So the inflation you talked about yeah. is, already, is already, you know, going, it's, it's going away. I don't know what to call it, galloping inflation or or what to call it. But anyway, thank you very much for your time, Ogbon Akoku, uh, investment and economic development expert. We appreciate and have really enjoyed your, your submission this morning. All right, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right, thank you very much. I don't know how much you listening or watching this morning bought a loaf of bread the last time, but that's where we are at the country right now. We'll return tomorrow with more on The Breakfast. Uh, please follow us on social media and on YouTube at Plus TV Africa. And also, we have a second YouTube account, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. You can check it out, us out on the internet as well, or the website. Just uh, do a Google search and it will lead you there. My name is Kofi Bartels. On behalf of the entire team, thank you very much for your time. The News at 9 is up next.